welcome to my talk about extending PlayFab with Azure Services. My name is Johannes Ebner. I am a Cloud Solution Manager in the Game Developer Relations team at Microsoft Gaming. I work with game developers around the world, consulting them in technical terms about um, building games with Azure and Azure Services like PlayFab. So, let's dive right in. First, we, we're going to be talking about why you want to extend, or why you would want to extend PlayFab. Then, a scenario of how you can extend PlayFab, a actual real-world example of that, or a scenario. Then, we look at the technology and the architecture that um, we would be using for this particular scenario. And then, we'll show a demo of a project that my coworker, my teammate, Andreas Pohl, and myself built um, after a partner of ours gave us particularly this scenario. Uh, we implemented this and we put this on GitHub for everyone to check out and use as an example. And after the demo, we'll have a short conclusion. And yeah, let's let's get started. So first the question, why would you extend PlayFab? PlayFab is a very complete solution, right? But there's always something that is a very unique requirement um, for you uh, personally, right? Because even if we try and we do try to build the very best and the, and the broadest solution for everyone, um, we can't, it cannot always um, catch everything, right? in PlayFab. We, we just can't build everything for you. So, you will have your own unique requirement. As an example, let's look into this scenario. A match history. There is, imagine a, a competitive game with a dedicated server, for example, let's say 4 versus 4 um, shooter, something that everyone really knows, right? At the end of the game, you want to send telemetry or even during the game you want to send telemetry you know how long a game took one right which team who had most frags and whatnot and you want to use this data and then um store it and 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 later use this data to 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 um to build some additional value like a a companion app for example or just a web api for others to use think of all the statistics that you could um, put out of uh, get out of a League of Legends um, match or your account in your career, in um, so you would be providing value to to players in in terms of motivation, and also their own insights, but also developer insights because you know how your game is being played, and and maybe yeah, you you can get a lot of uh, of data out of that. Obviously, you want this to be cost-effective, because, let's face it, every game needs to be very, very cost-effective, right? Because often margins uh, are small, right? Or you don't even have a recurring revenue stream from every user. And last but not least, it, it needs to be extensible, right? Particularly when we're talking about data, you you really want to be able to add more features to it later on. So, because we can't have everything in PlayFab itself, we really want to offer you the full power of the Microsoft Azure Cloud, right? We have everything from compute to databases to analytics solutions and even more, right? And we have this in, in very bare bones um, services, think about like compute stuff where you can actually execute code right you can either use a VM or you can have web apps that is essentially the VM abstracted away but you pay a fixed price for it and you can uh, choose your performance characteristics or you go even further and and take it take it one step um, uh, further uh, in terms of abstractions and look at serverless uh, execution environments. Um, in Azure, we have 
Azure Functions. Um, and this is really the integration point that we offer with, with PlayFab in, in order to, to extend PlayFab, right? Or this is the compute extension point. So with Cloud Script Functions, this is essentially the, the Azure Functions integration in PlayFab. And what it offers is, um, it is, as I said, a serverless offering, right? You, so you only pay for what you use. So it essentially spins up um, a VM in the background. You don't even have to ca uh, take care of this virtual machine, right? You just kind of upload code in any language um, to um, to this Azure function, and then this can be called over over different integration points. I'll get back to this in a in a second, and and then you only pay for what you use, essentially, right? So you could think of paper request or paper use. Then with Azure Functions you can uh, and with Cloud Script Functions you can integrate with any web service whatsoever, right? Um, because it you can do whatever you can do with a with a regular uh, web service, right? You can scale this with the full power and capability of Azure, really, is, um, as you can deploy this anywhere in the world. Um, you can scale this from a couple of users that are using this essentially to millions of users. And we really do hope that your game will be the next million uh, users game. We have a very easy deployment integration with GitHub. Um, so it is, it is literally just a few clicks away from, from your GitHub repository to automatically deploying to an Azure function. And we have obviously great tooling in all major IDEs and specifically in our own like Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code but also others like JetBrains Rider for example uh, or in, in all the JetBrains um, um, products for that matter I think. So as I said this is this is built on, on Azure Functions. Um, so there is various ways of, of calling an Azure Function um, and this is what we call triggers, so means of starting a function. One is, and the most commonly used, I think, is HTTP. It's the HTTP trigger where you essentially have a URL that you can call with or without a secret um, that then executes the server-side code, right? So in the background, the VM is, uh, is usually already running and then you good to go or there is a VM running and you're good to go so you call that URL and then immediately that code starts to run. There's also um, other triggers like a timer trigger or a storage queue for example or storage blob so essentially you can upload a file um, and and whenever that, that file is, is changed then um, you you can trigger this code but you can also use a queue that is like there are multiple other queue systems like event hubs for example uh, or or service bus um, that have differing characteristics um, queue, storage queue is the cheapest one but also the um, has the least features let, let's put it that way there is um, the two supported by by PlayFab at this moment are HTTP and Storage Queue. Then there is also bindings that allow you to uh, bind to specific data for input and output. Right? Um, output exists for everything but timer requests. So um, out there is there is a direct integration that you you can like send. Uh, or get the response, uh, get a response, for example, by an, for an HTTP request, or you can automatically integrate uh, something that um, the response data is automatically persisted to a blob storage, for example. The input um, bindings are also interesting, right? Because it allows you not only to trigger on, for example, a blob um, file change, but it can also directly ingest this data. Um, 
and the same goes obviously for the queue right um because we we want to have this data in the queue um and that's um what we'll um be using later from <coughs> or in a playfab co uh, context you have various options of calling a cloud script you can either um call the playfab cloud uh, uh, call it through playfab right this is the recommended way of doing this and you can either do this on server side but you can also do this on client side so um and and directly from uh, from playfab so first let's look at client side so your game client can uh, um use the playfab sdk to call a cloud script function this is a a a sdk method that is already integrated in the SD, in all the sdks this will essentially call playfab and uses uh, it to proxy this call to um this uh, uh, proxies this call to azure functions and when it does this it will enrich so to say um th this request with the playfab context so in the azure function you will know from which title the request is coming which user has initiated this and and some other metadata you could also uh, and this is an error that is missing i just see um you could also call this directly um from from the client right if you don't need a playfab um context whatsoever right um you could also do it that way that you then have the azure function call playfab and and get uh, really get the context and and also do authentication um there is also the way to use a game server for example to directly call playfab um and have it proxy the, the function call over to azure functions and the same way it can also call the azure function directly um oh no here yeah, the game client error to azure function is not missing huh. um then there is also something that we call um invoke via configuration that means that whenever a scheduled task is is um is called or a segmentation change um happens or a play stream event is is initiated then or recorded then you can react upon one of those uh, events um or yeah events um by calling a cloud script but you would then have to call it always directly via playfair because then is playfair internal and within such a cloud script there are so many possibilities right you can um log something you can make more complex calculations for example and based on the, uh, this um give give users for example players um a give the players a variation of items for example right uh things like that or send um do a, a more complex logic to send pu push notifications for example or write statistics like leaderboards all right so as i said calling cloud script functions in in playfab can be done via two options one is http that is synchronous so it provides the response of that uh, of that call so you get return values immediately after the operation is completed however one limitation of that is because if you directly uh, if you call this uh, through playfab it playfab is 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 essentially holding a a handle to this playfab function so it can 
ingest the return value and return back to to the callee like your game clients so in order to not overload um and 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 essentially starve of connections on playfab um it only hold it it needs to return within one second right if you do not need asynchronous uh, way of calling this uh, this class group function this azure function then you can do this via a storage queue and this is in fact what we're going to use in in the demo today um it cannot provide a response because it is essentially asynchronous right it um it it is fire and forget essentially um you cannot directly do this but you can find other means of of getting getting a return value but out of the box this is not supported um execution time does therefore not matter right because you it is essentially you put in a message into a queue that is what what playfab does for you um and eventually this triggers the execution of a azure function which then executes executes and on completion does something right um that is then up to you what it does however it is a little bit more complicated because you or a bit more complex because you not only need to set up an azure function but also a storage account including a storage queue uh, to be set up when we look at the at the architecture i talked about this earlier right um at the beginning of the talk so you have a game server and this upon completion of a match sends a custom event using playstream events that is um a very simple way of do uh, of sending sending notifications with arbitrary payload to playfab um upon ingestion of this we we set up playfab to um to call a a cloud script in an azure function using the storage queue uh, mechanism so what playfab does effectively is it enqueues a event message in a, in a storage queue and this will then trigger and therefore dequeue the message an event ingester azure function this azure function um takes that data and and persists the event data in a cosmos db the cosmos db is a global scale multi um write or multi write node um database um with eventual consistency or with various um consistency patterns that you can use them. it's very effective for games in general um there is we, we for cost effectiveness we use the new serverless skew so essentially you just pay for the storage and um and 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 per request essentially so this is where we store the data then we then have another um azure function that we use as a web api so a player for example could have and this is what what we show in the in the demo as well have a a web application or an, a companion app here that queries this web api so does a http request sends its its uh, playfab authentication token and this app then authenticates against or checks this token against playfab and only if this succeeds then it queries um is allowed to query the cosmos db to return um data back to the mobile client so let's dive right in and show the demo so welcome to my demo let's get started um with the overview real quick so um i'm i'm talking about a a project or i will be demoing a project that my colleague andreas and i built um Playfab match history extension. This is on GitHub. Uh, everyone can check it out. This is an MIT license. Um, and I'll walk you through um, how this is being set up and what it contains. So when we look at the at the architecture, let's make this big um, here. 
Um, we have a game server application, which sends the events into play, uh, PlayFab's PlayStream, which then enqueues this into a storage queue that is being picked up by, or that will trigger an event ingester as your function, which will in turn um, persist the match data that uh, was generated from the game server. Um, it will persist this into a Cosmos DB. It is um, our um, globally available multi-write um, master uh, NoSQL database. You can have uh, multiple write nodes uh, uh, across the globe if you want um, with varying consistency models. Um, which makes it very great for gaming, game applications. And then we also have a web API, um, an HTTP web API that can be used, for example, by a companion app, um, mobile companion app to query the match history for the particular play, um, to make sure that, um, players are eligible, um, for this title, for this particular game to be, um, uh, retrieving the data. We um, have implemented a simple authentication uh, where we take a session ticket of a previously logged in um, um, user on the on the mobile phone or whatever client that is. Um, we take the session ticket and validate it against um, PlayFab to see whether this is a valid user, and only then we're gonna query the database. All right. Um, so as I said, we'll show you, I will show you everything that we need, um, in terms of putting this all together. Um, a lot of the de deployment and stuff, the infrastructure deployment can be done with Terraform. So I'm going to skip this because this will take some, uh, some time. Um, uh, but we have, um, put this all together so you can easily set up the Azure side of things, um, with this. Now to play fab. Um, in PlayFab, to hook everything up, we need to tell, essentially, uh, PlayFab where to put the events and 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 uh, so so an Azure function can pick it up. First, we need to register the function. Um, you go to automation in your title. You go to automation and then Cloud Script. I've already created this, but I'll show you the experience. Register function. Um, as I said in the presentation before. Trigger, we only have two trigger types, so um, Azure Function uh, potentially supports more than uh, just those two. Um, but here we can only use two HTTP trigger, so this is synchronous and you will get a response. And Q is asynchronous, you don't get a uh, response, but this is exactly what we what we want because we don't, that's the game server, I don't care about uh, what happens with it. Um, I just want to tell everyone, tell PlayFab with the PlayStream event, hey, a match has happened. That's the metadata for it. And, uh, and now I can go and die. Uh, so that's a game server, right? Um, so we need to give it a function name. This is purely internal for internal reference within PlayFab. So this is, um, um, match finish. Um, we need to give it a queue name and a connection string. The queue name is important because it identifies the queue where it, and it's put it in, and um, then obviously a connection string, so it needs to know which kind of credentials um, are being being uh, needed. Um, to as said, we already set this all up with Terraform. So if you have um, set up everything with Terraform, you should have a, um, a storage account. Uh, so this is the Azure portal. We have a storage account, which you can look into the da data here with the integrated explorer. But it has like multiple services, like blob service for binary large ob uh, um, objects, uh, files, this is Windows file shares, essentially, uh, a table service, uh, a very simple table uh, table storage and then queue service this is what we need uh we create a queue here um just give it a name i already did this here the player finished match queue we copy its name um we can have a look at the messages already that we're gonna send later so we copy this in here as the queue name that is the queue name 
and then on on the on the storage account we go to access keys and here you can see a connection string um you need to show click show keys and it will show you the key and the connection string connection string is in a url to this particular storage account with uh, basically credentials um you we have two here so you can rotate um the keys and, and create new ones without having a downtime which is very important for for your game also you can also create a rotation reminder for you to to do this like uh, like every 30 days or every 60 days or something like that all right so now that we have a connection string we would paste it in here i'm not going to do this uh, and instead i'll just show you how the the finished one looks like all right um so now we have registered the function but this by itself does nothing right um it just tells playfab hey there is a function here and you can like easily hook it up within playfab so we need to also set up a rule um i'll just edit one um because um uh, yeah, you can see this um uh, how it, uh, well let's create create a new rule give it a name then you need to give it a event type so you can you could use one of the predefined ones but we created our own one uh, i'll show you in a second in code but when you create new one uh, your own one is um, prefixed by title and if you've already sent it um, at least once it will show up in the autocomplete here once you um, type in title and then a dot right so I've already sent this event as you saw in the in the messages. So um, yeah, this will already be autocompleted here. So player finished match um, is the name of the event. You will see this in a minute, and the title ID is the one. I have. So this for this title. Now you can also specify conditions. So it will only trigger on on, on certain conditions. You can like, check something on the on the event data. We're not going to do this. We we'll just trigger. The action as you can see you can even trigger multiple actions on one rule so we just want whenever this event type occurs we want to not send a push notification but uh create an azure function or trigger an azure function um it is already pre-selected here because that is the one that um that we have um already registered and and so we just select this here. You could uh, send additional arguments here. And then we can click save if we want to save this, uh, which I'm not going to do because I already have this one. OK, good. So we have created um, the link, essentially, to the, to the Azure function, and now the rule to actually trigger the Azure function. So what this does, whenever this um, event occurs, you would see this here in play stream. It will put a message into the queue here, which it already did because I executed this, this prepared this demo. Obviously. Okay, so this is um, how, how an event looks like. Uh, now let's dive into code. So we have those projects here. Uh, again, reminding you of the overview. So first, we're going to talk about the game server. We've created a mock application here. This is essentially just this uh, program class. Um, this is um, Playfab API authentication on the server side. So we need to have a title ID and develop a secret key to be able to work with the API without having an actual user because on a game server, we want to work with for multiple users. So we, we need the server auth uh, application to be authenticated by itself right and, and can do essentially admin admin duty um so not uh, restricted like a player um to get the secret key you go to your title settings so click the cog wheel here click title settings and then on the secret keys tab um, you will see um, your secret key that you can use we have chosen to use this in, in environment variables or pull this from environment variables to make it a little bit more secure. 
Um, then we just check if there is the title is actually there that, uh, that we're going to use. And then we generate a random natural result. So this is just like test data we generate here. But this is the real meat. Um, this is where we generate the event. So this is metadata we put together. We give it a name. So player finish match. This is what we saw in the rules over here. Yeah, oops. Automation. Rules. So this is here, the player finish match event. Um, we um, we need to give it a player uh, a playfab ID. This can be any entity ID of playfab. In this case, we use a player ID. We just grab a random one from the ID list here and redefine ones. So we have pre-registered those those um, those players, and we give it a timestamp, which is obviously now. And then this is the actual uh, actual thing. This is where we write the event metadata. Uh, so it's or the event payload. So we give it match data. You can go and give it any number of, uh, of elements, of dictionary elements, because it's of type string object. So the keys are of type string, and then you can have an arbitrary object below that. Um, in this case, um, this is a status update entity. So this is just like a match ID and whether the match was one. So very simple. Um, we don't need to take care of serializing this. So when we actually send the event here, um, so write player event async, this will create a play stream event. We just pass it this event um, data. Uh, the SDK will take care of serializing this to JSON and forging a HTTP request or creating an HTTP request and sending this to PlayFab uh, on our behalf. Right? So we don't need to do anything. So we just log this, um, that we've done this and, and sleep a bit so we don't create too many events. Okay, so next step. So this is where we create PlayFab events that you would be then seeing in the play stream occurring here. Those will be picked up, sent to the uh, sent to the queue. So those will essentially be done on those events, and then we have the event ingester Azure function that actually gets triggered by those messages and executes. Um, this is, as I said, is an Azure function. Um, just take a, a step back. An Azure function is a, um, it's actually tiered, so there's an Azure Function app that can have multiple Azure Functions within it. Um, you can create, do this in any number of files um, and classes within one uh, project. For uh, in C Sharp, for example, you might have may vary in other languages. As I said, you can use basically any any language to to write Azure Functions. Um, the important thing is in C Sharp, at least. Um, you have a function uh, um, that is annotated with a function attribute that gives it a name and has a trigger, in our case, a queue trigger. But you, uh, I could like do another function here, give it a different name, and it could essentially um, uh, run on the same match queue, right? Uh, but you should really not do this. Um, Let's take another um, IQ, give it another name. So this will actually, if you deploy it, will create two functions, right? Uh, with different names. Um, when you deploy this, it will look like this. Um, so this is the event gesture function. So this is the function app, yeah, actually. And then you can see different functions in here. Oh, okay, because it stopped. I, I stopped it so I can use it um, locally. Is it here? Well, I've stopped it here. Okay, this one we can actually start. Um, okay, so good stuff. Yeah, so the, the event ingester function. 
as I said, is defined by its name. Then uh, we define a Q trigger in the signature. So we take the Q name. This is the one that we've registered within Playfair. Um, so let me look here. So this is exactly this. This is this Q. Okay. Um, and we take the connection string from the configuration here. So this is the example configuration you would put in here, the same connection string as you would here in, in Playfab. Okay. It's exactly the same thing. So now, um, once it, this is the binding uh, for the trigger, and um, once an, a message lands within this queue, it will be picked up by this function deployment. And it will be read, and uh, and the message will be fed as a string to this, uh, as an argument here to this function, and it will end up in my queue item here. So we can take this. This is this is pure JSON, as you saw in here, pure JSON. Um, we can deserialize this into a context, and in the context, we still have some JSON data for the event data. We deserialize this into the actual event data. So this will be of type player finished match event. This is our own, uh, our own uh, what is, uh, event model. Um, and we take this and write a match, um, a match entity to the database. So we just take the ID where the match was one and the master player entity ID. So this player ID and save this to the database. This is very simple. We use the Cosmos DB SDK, and this is like just this container. The container is essentially a table. You can think of that or a collection. It's called match in the play, uh, PF match history DB, and create this item async. If you want to have a look at the Cosmos DB and how this looks, we have the Cosmos DB. We have one container called match in here. So we'll put this into the data explorer. Okay, we don't have any entries here. So once I show you the actual running demo, we'll we'll see it in here. Okay, so this was the event ingest. Now as I said, um we also have so we cover the game server, the event ingest that saves it to the database, but then we also have the client application and the web API. So let's have a look at web API. The web API is, as, uh, is a, I have a function as well, I'm sorry. One click, uh, get player match history. We could have put this into the same function app, but we wanted to separate and be able to scale individually. So this is why we put this in different apps. Um, so we have here a class as well. Um, we give it a function name. This time we use an HTTP trigger instead of a queue trigger. We find that we can call it via get. It has function level security. So anyone who essentially knows the function and its key can call it. And, um, and when we call it, the, the HTTP request will be, um, in, in this variable. The logger just comes from, from that. Azure Functions playing with. What you might have also seen is, are these annotations. These um, define metadata for open API, um, um, for an open API specification. So uh, with this, we can generate essentially a JSON uh, file that um, machines or other clients could use to discover this API, right? So with kind of, of, of uh, request routes are, are available. Uh, what kind of, uh, HTTP methods can be used? What the response codes are, um, for which case. Um, so you can automatically build or explore APIs. But also there is a, a web API, uh, uh, excuse me, a browser based UI that lets you as a developer explore and try out the, uh, the API. And I will show you this. Um, with the live demo. Um, so we have the session ticket. Uh, uh, we, we take a session ticket for the authentication here. 
So when a client wants to authenticate um, or wants to query the data um, in the database on behalf of a user, it needs to be first logged in in PlayFab, send us the Play um, the PlayFab uh, session ticket, which we then authenticate against PlayFab before we query the database. So we take the parameter here. Again, here's our API authentication for the API itself, but we still want to check um, the ticket, and that's why we already need to have the secret so we are, uh, we're able to do this. So we check whether the session ticket is valid. If it, if there's any HTTP response that is not 200 OK, basically, then we will return this to the user directly. Um, in case it was a result, we take the PlayFab ID, so the player's ID, and fetch all the matches for this particular user from the database. So if you've seen SQL before, it should be very simple to read for you. So we select all items from the match container where the master player entity is this particular player ID. And then we just put this into a list of matches and return it to the caller. Okay, and so this will be the result list, and we will return this to the calling client. And the calling client in our example will be the PlayFab client mod. So this uh, essentially simulates a mobile application. And we just specify that we want to connect to the local server. If I get play, uh, player mesh history, that is the root that we expose with the web API. Um, so we check whether the title exists again. Um, we log in the user with PlayFab, get the login response, and this is where we take the session ticket and craft a request URI against this web API that, that I just showed you. And fetch the result, and this is the list of matches that I also just showed. And we then display this um, on screen. So now we have all the components. Let's actually try it out and, and start it. So when I hit F5, we'll start all the applications. First, we'll build it. And then we'll start it. So here we go. So the game server is creating events. This is the event ingester that um, takes the events and saves it to the database. And then we have the web API and, and the Swagger API uh, post here um, by the other Azure function um, that is taking requests already. And as you can see, we're, we're checking for um, all the players on, on the match state. They're all false. Interesting. Okay. No one wins. Okay. Um, <laughs> let's check PlayFab. So we should see them coming in. Yes. Let's see here and need to Munich, Germany. Uh, if we pause this real quick, you can see that a player logged in. Uh, then a, a, fin a player uh, finished the match. Um, you can see. The event payload that we send from the game server to to PlayFab, and that's kind of cool. And yeah, we see that the the, the the player action was executed and how long it took. So this is the Azure function that gets executed. All right. Um, so what you can also see is the, the messages coming in here, so, and they're immediately used. So. Hardly ever see one because it's just not showing me. Um, yeah, so we can all should already see. Um, matches being stored. Interesting. There we go. This is the match data we see. Uh, that, is, that is written to the database. Okay, and then we have the public API 
that can query this. And as I said, this is what, what this client does. Uh, but I also wanted to show you the web API, um, swagger UI. So essentially, uh, this is being generated, this, this swagger JSON. So this defines the API. Um, and here we have just a visual representation of that for, from human developers to explore the API. Um, so you would, um, need to pass a session ticket as a parameter. I've already prepared this, so I'm clicking execute. And here you can see the request URI that I am essentially executing against. And this is the response body where it says, oh, match is one true, match is one false, and all of that. Oh, there are a lot of true ones, so maybe that's just a display error in here. See, presentation, um, sure, this is pure rubber ducking. You know, showing someone else your program and then discovering <laughs> problems with it. All right. Yeah. So this is how this works. Um, hope you like it. I hope you like it. Um, check out the GitHub. I will link this uh, back in the presentation. So that's for the demo. Thanks. A bit of tooling here as well. The Azure Functions uh, tools that allow you to run Azure Functions locally. Azure write our storage emulator that allows you to use the storage locally and the PlayFab local API server that allows you to directly connect to your local, um, locally running Azure function so you don't have to spend precious time and, and calls to actual PlayFab when you're developing locally. And last we have the PlayFab Explorer which is a VS Code extension um, to better interface and work with Azure, uh, with Playfair and Cloud Script functions. There are also uh, a few resources like uh, blog posts of my own detailing um, setup steps uh, in Visual Studio, for example, um, on, on how to, to, to work with Azure Functions and Playfab. Um, a, a, a few bits of documentation, how to do local debugging, and and also obviously setting up Cloud Script, and then the the second last thing is my blog post and and also a link to the sources of the project I've been demoing to you today, and last a link to the PlayFab Explorer in the Visual Studio Marketplace. I'd love to see what you're building with Playfair Banager and please do share your feedback with us and yeah, I'll hope you achieve more with um, our services. Again, do not hesitate to get in touch uh, with us as a team or with me uh, personally. You can find me on Twitter at Structed, on LinkedIn of course, and have a look at my blog and see you around. Take care.